original. And I don't know that they're going to go back and be like, hey, that's a remake, let me do my homework. You know, so I think that they, they'll definitely enjoy um, this 2019 version. Yeah, and I think, um, I feel like maybe our standards were a little lower. In the, like, in this one, I feel like it's, it's very character-based, too. Like, like um, Tashi's character is super likable and you want her to succeed. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I think that's kind of a new new wrinkle in it. It's, it's, a, it's a little more character-based. Is this one of the situations where we're kind of pretending three and four didn't happen? <laughs> or is that something that we can discuss? Um, he just shot the prank. Well, <laughs> yeah, in a way, sure. <laughs> I actually, three, three I, I, I like, uh, four, four's a little rough. Because you don't see critters much in, in the movie. You're kind of in space and then you see a critter once in a while. So, but. Fun fact, my hair was actually red like yours when I first auditioned for this project. Oh, yeah. yeah. I had to dye it back for critters. Did you, did you want to dye it right back? No. <laughs> I mean, yes, back to red, yeah. I was so badass. I think that, that helped me get the roll, the red hair. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it was the red hair. It wasn't me. Yeah, it was just the hair. <laughs> Did, uh, did Dee give you any advice on fighting rubber monsters? Um, mostly to just have fun. You know, don't take it too seriously. Just, you know, have fun and kick ass. Because she was so in character with being a bounty hunter. Um, so, so that was basically it. She was just like, we need to have fun. You know, do it, do it for the culture. Okay. I will, I will. And then her fight scene was so great in the original. I can't talk about it, but I'll try to match it. You know? Did she give you any indication about um, how life would be if she were not on a screen queen of mold? How life would be in Comic Con? Well, she just told me how fun it was like to do Comic Con and to connect with the fans. And at the time that we had this conversation, coming to Comic Con wasn't on the schedule. So it's just like she forewarned me about it and then coming here and actually experiencing it. It's exactly how she told me how to be. Did you know going in that it was going to be puppets, and not CG? I, I, well, because this is my first horror film, I had never worked with CGI before, so I honestly d didn't work on any project with it, so I didn't know what it was until maybe a few months prior to booking this film. So, but I was happy to see it because I hear people talk about it all the time, oh, I had to talk to a stick with a tennis ball on it. I'm like, what? Who wants to have a conversation with a tennis ball on a stick? So I was happy to, you know, have the puppets with the animatronics. So I really felt like when the critters were angry, they were really angry at me, you know, seeing the eyebrows and everything. Was really I don't think it was ever up for debate. I, I would have never, I would have never done the movie if it was CGI. And I don't think anyone at Warner Brothers or any producers were into it either. So. Uh, it, to me, it's not critters. If, if it's, uh, yeah. it's gotta be Aliens are real. Things. Yeah, they're called critters. How does it go with you directing? Do you direct the puppeteers, or do you talk to them as if they are the puppeteers? How does that work? <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> um, it's a mix of both. Sometimes I, I feel like I will straight up talk to the puppet. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes she would, he would call Keith Bianca. Bianca, yeah. can I get a little bit more? Yeah. Okay. It's a mix of both. Sometimes I'll lose myself and just talk to the puppet, for sure. <laughs> I imagine a lot of panics Yeah. The tears are like, Bob Bianca. Yeah, yeah. And they're like a little louder because they're under the table. I can't hear you, Bobby. And he's like... Oh Locks, right, oh right, there's people. There's people I gotta talk to, right. I'd also love to see the talk to the panel that mentioned um Mary Quitness. Uh, what, do you, what do you think of the future of uh, the pretty cinematic universe? I don't know. I really don't know. I think it's all dependent on how people watch critics and take yeah. I, it's funny that he says that. I'm, I'm starting to think he got that from me because Christmas is, you know, about it being Jesus' birthday. And when I went to South Africa, I got a temporary tattoo on the back of my neck that said Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So I feel like he just put the two together and yeah. kind of like Jesus Christ. Yeah, instead, of, instead of Christ.
Christ Christ, C R I T E S. So I don't know why I did that. They had to cover it with makeup. It was pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I probably should have did this after we did the, the movie, but I was so excited to work on Critters. I was like, look, I got this fake three week tattoo. I was just like, cover that. Cover the it. The makeup people are just like, oh. God damn it, Tashi. Another 20 minutes of like makeup. Well, I can hear was a crypto behind me. I know, right? <laughs> What would you hope then for the future of British? Would you like to I would like, here's my pipe dream, because Critters for me is, is kind of the franchise as a kid that that, uh, that scared me because I had access to it. Because if you look at the Critters VHS cover, it's like a friendly cartoon character. So I love the idea of Critters being a franchise that, that kids stumble upon and, and kind of get screwed and uh, horrified and opens the doors of other horror films. So... No matter what they do, I hope they keep that spirit of of being somewhat accessible to kids to some extent. And there's a lot yeah. of cutaway shots to death scenes, or was it there? Because you're working with the puppets. What's that? Because you're working with the puppets, you yeah. have to get a little creative with the um, the angles you're using, so you don't capture yeah. anything. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. um, yeah, there's people underneath tables. So. Be wary of that. You're working with, with the critters, and there's like three men that I'm trying not to step on. They're like, getting closer, we need you more to the right of the frame. And I'm just like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, sir, I stepped on your hand. <laughs> He's like, it's okay, as long as it's not my critter hand. So, final question Are there any other puppets that you'd like to rebring to life in the future? Any other revivals? Or do you have any particular puppets yourself you'd like to watch kill people? Well, I mean, I read That's probably the obvious choice. You know what you should do? Instead of, like, Mary Kreitman, it should be about gremlins versus critters. Gremlins versus critters. Like, like Jason versus... It's, I think this, they both own... I think it's the same company, so... Like Jason versus Freddy, Critters. I agree. Yeah. I'm on I think that would be super badass. Yeah. Bianca versus. Let's go pitch it. Yeah, I know. Right after this, right? After yeah. Heard it here first. Bianca versus Gizmo, like, where? Lucky. I mean, take you guys with me. And just while we're starting, can I get you two real quick, just loudly and clearly, to say both of your names and your positions on the production so that we can get the transcriber to be able to type it on the website? My name is Tasha Washington, and I play Drea in Critters Attacks. I'm Bobby Miller, and I'm the director of Critters Attacks. How's life in Critterland? Life is crazy in Critterland, you know? <laughs> It's just furry balls everywhere. You got nine minutes, what? Can I say that? I'm sorry. I think so. I mean, they are. With teeth. That makes it less yeah. with teeth. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's exciting. I mean, going on such an adventure. We shot in Cape Town. And um, this is my first horror film, so I couldn't ask for a better first experience with working with any kind of scary creature I'm happy with you said your mum was um, you into critters when you were younger how, how old were you and what did you think of the original movie? I think I was about five or six years old yeah I, that's what I said wow like why are you showing me this and then I was like mommy I don't want to watch it she was like you're watching it <laughs> this is horror history day I'm like what <laughs> like they just made that up um, so yeah she showed me that and Gremlins and uh, I was I was, I was mortified. It kind of ruined my childhood for like 20 minutes. I got over it. Um, so to go from being scared as a child to like doing this film as an adult is pretty cool. Did you find that that kind of like sparked a horror interest in you then? It did because after that I I was still scared. But I would be like, so what are we watching today? She was like, yes, it's horror Monday. I thought it was Friday last week. Well, today is Monday. Shut up. So, I'm like, um, so from that, it was, I think the worst one where I kind of like took a step back before I went back to watching horror films was Nightmare Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, that can really give a child insomnia. So, so. Um, 
but yeah, I've loved art ever since. I was a kid because my mother introduced it to me. So we're in this era where we're kind of seeing a lot of classic horror IPs being revived in the modern age, and you know, like the Puppet Master just got like the new Puppet Master movie, and I just want to ask, how is it trying to balance that classic fan base, especially as a director, this classic fan base, with these kind of modern sensibilities and what we expect from a modern horror movie? Well, I, I think what's missing is, um, I think, like a sense of fun. There's like a lot of really great, incredible art, but like hereditary gaming nightmares. And I think um, something like Critters, what I would try to do is like bring back that, that feeling of fun that I had when I stumbled upon the series when I was a little kid. So I feel like that's kind of universal. And then modern-wise, what would you say? I mean, I think that... Bobby did a great job, and our writer Scott loved him, balancing like millennials versus, you know, the classic cult fans. Because if, I'm sure a lot of people.